What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four Sports. So, you know, you look at Brooklyn, that whole thing, that big three, it didn't work out the way everybody planned or a lot of people hoped. And, of course, James Harden is now with the Philadelphia 76ers and uh, KD is hurt. Hopefully, he'll be back later on the end of this month. Kyrie is relegated to being a part-time player. He's not playing tonight because, it's, you know, the uh, Brooklyn Nets are at home. Last I checked, they were leading against the Sacramento Kings, but, you know, they desperately need a victory, man. They've lost 11 consecutive games, and they have tailspin out of first place, which is, I think as recent as Christmas Day. And now I think they're in a nice spot in the Eastern Conference. But, um, you know, it got me thinking about other Nets players or, you know, who didn't quite live up to expectations or eras. And the main guy that pops in my head, man, maybe some younger people who are subscribed to me don't know this guy, man, but Derek Coleman. Those of you who are my age and older, you you very well remember Derek Coleman. And, I mean, if you look at his career numbers, he averaged over 16 points a game, over nine rebounds a game. The two and a half assists are there. Respectable shooting percentages. And you would think he had a solid career. But if you watched him in his prime, and unfortunately his prime was only three or four seasons, but if you watched him in his prime and you thought what his ceiling could be, because he never reached his ceiling. That's the sad thing. Derek Coleman should have been a top 50 all-time player with the potential to be up in the upper echelon. Like When it comes to skills and potential and ability, Derek Coleman was in rarefied air. He should have been Dirk Nowitzki before Dirk Nowitzki, but a more athletic version of Dirk Nowitzki. Charles Barkley, who is one of the greatest power forwards this game has ever seen, once said that Derek Coleman had the potential to be the greatest power forward in the history of the NBA. And, you know, Charles Barkley was a great power forward in his prime at that time. You know, Derek Coleman is the only player to get Shaq. You know what I'm saying? And, and Shaq's entire 19-year career, Derek Coleman is the only one to really get Shaq as far as uh, dunking on him. Derek Coleman was the first overall pick in the 1990 NBA draft. He was selected by the New Jersey Nets. And um, he had a marvelous first season. He averaged 18 points, 10 rebounds, one steal, one block, two assists. And um, he shot 47% from the floor and 34% from three. Now, remember, at this time, the league average for three-point percentage was around 33% or so. So that was above league, league average. And we're talking about power forward. And he was 6'10", I think 225, 230 when he first came to the NBA. And, you know, Derrick Cohn, before he started putting on all that weight, man, he was marvelous, man. He could bring the ball up. Uh, he had handles. Uh, go between defenders. He was doing things that most power forwards at that time weren't able to do. You understand what I'm saying? Like, the things that, that guys are doing today, that have become commonplace, these unicorns, you know, these guys who are power forwards that have these skill, these skilled abilities, guard-like uh, skills, you weren't seeing that back then. You saw traditional big men, the Moses Malones and, you know, the Bill Lambeers. That, that, that's what you mostly saw in the power forward slash center position. But Derek Coleman was bringing up, you know, doing things that we hadn't seen really before in a big man, you know. And he could shoot the rock. You know, he could shoot. Now, he wasn't a guy shooting 40%. But mind you, at that time, the three-point shot was really just starting to take off in popularity. 
And most guys still in the NBA weren't shooting at, at an elite level. So for a big man to shoot over 30% from three, 34, 35% was remarkable. And, um, you know, he had so much ability, man. But the problem with Derek Coleman is was his attitude. Um, you know, as far as he was lazy. He, he did not have that burning desire to be great. He was a guy that was fine playing at his ability, playing where his skill set is. And that's where Derek Coleman, even though I think he's as bad as Coleman was, he's not nearly as bad as Ben Simmons, but that's what Ben Simmons reminds me of. Now, Ben Simmons isn't going to have the issues with weight gain that Derek Coleman had. Derek Coleman just, his frame, you could tell he was going to fill out. But that's what he kind of reminds me of, man. Derek Coleman was just lazy, and he was, you know, uh, fine just playing off his ability. And um, you know, that was a new generation of players coming in the league at that time, too. You know, you had the, the Sean Kemp's, the Derek Coleman's, the Shaquille O'Neal's, uh, Larry Johnson's. And even though a lot of us, quote unquote, old heads like to shake our fists at the young guys for having bad attitudes, if we're really being honest, you could kind of start tracing the infancy of the prima donna attitude to that generation of players. And I'll tell you why. Um, that's when NBA salaries were really starting to take off. In the early 1990s, it was the benefit of the Bird uh, Magic era. And then, of course, Michael Jordan just took over from those guys who were just starting to, you know, decline. And Michael took it to a higher level. And with all of the pop, with that surging popularity of the NBA and increasing revenues, of course, players' salaries soared. You know, as I said before, in the NBA's infancy, in the late, in the late 40s, um, I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I think something like a, a good contract in the late 40s <laughs> might have been like a five-year contract worth maybe $2,000. That was a big contract <laughs> back in the 40s. It was decent. It was okay money, but you couldn't, you know, you had, those guys had to have a secondary job, you know. Then in the 50s, you know, uh, a good contract was $30,000, you know, maybe five-year, $30,000. And then in the 60s, Bill Russell, $100,000, you know, maybe six-year contracts. Contracts were longer back then. Uh, then in the 70s, a, a good contract, I'm going to get to my point, but I just want to put this out there. In the 70s, the money jumped up. To the point where the players were making the same money the CEOs were making. Now they were making some good money, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars, seven year contracts, six years contract, and then in the in the eighties, finally these guys were making millions. But in the early nineties, you started seeing guys making eight million a year, nine million a year. Hot Rod Williams was making $11 million a year, and he was far from the best player in the NBA. Then you saw Larry Johnson sign a, like a, a six-year, $84 million contract. That was big fucking money back then. The, also, the NBA had just started switching from commercial to chartered flights. They provided flights for these players. So, you know, they don't have to sit with the regular people anymore. We have our own private planes now. So these players are feeling, they're feeling themselves a little bit more, man. You know, a lot of elitism. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they think of themselves as stars, celebrities. That started with the 90s. Even though a lot of us like to point it to these generations, yeah, it's gotten worse exponentially. But it started back then. But Derek Coleman, back to him, man. I mean, he was a great, great player. Uh, that team could have been great. Him, Drazen Petrovic, Kenny Anderson. Um, 
think Kendall Gill was on that team a little bit later on, but it just didn't work out, man. It just, it just did. Uh, I think also which comes on that team, uh, Mookie Blaylock, that could have been a great team, but when Drazen Petrovic died, Derek Coleman's attitude it just ruined that team. And um, then afterward, man, he slowly transitioned to being a bit of a, a role player. But before that, Derek Coleman won a gold medal in the FIBA Championship Series in 1994. And uh, But after that, he transitioned to being a bit of a role player. I'm going to tell you something that you guys may not know. Did you know that the Chicago Bulls actually considered signing Derek Coleman over Dennis Rodman? I think, in hindsight, that would have been a huge mistake because one thing would have happened. Either he would have got traded eventually, Derek Coleman, or him and Michael Jordan would have got into it because you can't put a guy like Michael Jordan, who was the was the ultimate overachiever in so many ways, hard worker, and put Derek Coleman's lazy ass on there. But the only reason why Derek Coleman didn't get signed is that Chicago was notoriously cheap. They didn't want to take on Derek Coleman's contract. But afterwards, man, Derek Coleman, I mean, he was a good player, but he put on a lot of weight, blew up to 265, 270. And, you know, he became a good, solid, you know, player, then eventually a role player. Man, he played all the way to 2005, but he was never the player that he once was and you know it, it was kind of sad man like i said you know he you look at the numbers they're great but he should have been a guy in that era man he should have been averaging 25 10 3 4 assists uh he should have been having deep playoff runs he only played in 39 playoff games in his career he should have been the 2000s, he should have, it should have been, in the early 2000s, it should have been Derek Coleman, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett. It should have been those guys, man. A lot of people would like to point out Kemp, but Kemp even got more out of his career than Derek Coleman. So I just want to do a video of a tale, man. This is why I'm a little bit like the way I am with certain players. Man, I look at certain certain attributes that they have certain tendencies as far as them not showing that they're dedicated. Because I've seen this, a lot of us have seen this shit over and over again. We've seen these players who have all this ability, but they can waste, they waste it. So tell me what you guys think.